Welcome, Amy, and we thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much, David. And um, I want to let everyone know that I'm really thankful and, and humbled and charmed to be here. Um, a lot of the leadership has heard um, some of my stories and such because I had to have a separate meeting with them to ask them what exactly a sermon entails. Um, because I have been to church uh, in all of maybe a few handful of times uh, to give it the old try as a kid because my neighbor kids went to Sunday school and I was like, I don't want to be alone on a Sunday. Um, but it never really uh, took hold for me um, in a strong sense in, in the way of organized religion. But I would say that spirituality has been something that's deeply part of all of us, whether or not we ascribe to um, an organized and dedicated faith or not. And um, despite my a-religious tendencies, I went to a Buddhist university for my grad program. I've lived in different countries that um, have different um, dominant religions of which I've been fortunate enough to bear witness to and um, be part of um, some really special rituals and holidays and such of that. Um, so so I, I said, you know, right out of the get go, I didn't want to be appropriative. I was like, I just don't want to do the wrong thing. And I think the best suggestion was don't say God too much, which is good. I wouldn't say that anyway. Um, but I would say that I am super humbled and super thankful to be back with you all. Um, I know that I've met most of you or many of you, at least uh, at a prior conversation um, that we had last year. And I'm sorry that we can't all be together, but I'm super thankful that we're able to, to be together virtually. Um, and so I think that a lot of conversation today kind of leads really great into my conversation with you all um, and, and on spiritual social, social justice and remembrance and action. Um, and so I don't usually read things. Um, I usually just kind of ad lib, but I, for sake of what today entails and a 20 minute limit, um, verbosity is a skill of mine. It's like a, a gold medalist Olympic sport. So I think writing it down. So bear with me that I am reading from something I wrote and um, I will provide this to, um, Miriam and Barry, if you want the transcript, because there is more information about things um, that I won't read, because that would be too long. So change is the only thing we can expect in life. Change is what happens, whether we're ready for it or not. And I urge you to consider how you harness the goodness and intention of changing tides in our community, our politics, and how we love, support, and care for one another. In 2020, we thought we had a lot of work to do, but 2020 has highlighted nothing but opportunities for each of us to create the future we all aspire to live in. And we have a lot of work still to do. I was driving last night from Chicago and a song from high school came on. In the midst of a nostalgic car scream singing performance, I paused and considered where I was and what my world was like when I first heard that song. I was 14 years old and thought I knew everything about the world. No one could tell me anything. And for, for sake of argument, that's still true. Um, <laughs> the world felt small and strange, but manageable. Um, the joyful freedom I felt singing this song at age 14 reminded me of a simpler world. But we know that even at age 14, the world isn't that simple. Um, and if we've learned anything through 2020 and almost a full year of trying to gain understanding of a health pandemic crisis and a racial pandemic crisis, that our world isn't that simple at all. And it takes all of us to get back to a semblance of a new normal, a better normal, an equitable normal. But we all have a lot of work to do. In 2020 thus far, we've lost at least 47 individuals due to violent acts incited by transphobia, racism, homophobia, and sexism. This is not the normal I want to return to. I do not wanna have a list of names and an even longer list of names of those who are unnamed of who have been killed by the inequities of the world that we share together. We need to transgress this normal. We have to act with integrity and, and equity to recreate our normal. I'd like to read um, the names of those we've lost in 2020 to give space and power to the contributions that they gave to our world. On October 25th, we lost Angelique Unique, a 25-year-old Black transgender woman killed in Memphis, Tennessee. On October 20th, we lost Marcella Stintlet, um, shot by Waukegan police officers in Illinois. On October 11th, we lost Sarah Blackwood, a transgender woman killed in Indianapolis. On October 7th, we lost Brooklyn Deshana, 20, a black transgender woman killed in Shreveport, Louisiana. On October 3rd, we lost Jonathan Dwayne Price, shot by Wolf City police officer in Texas. 
On October 3rd, we lost Felicia Harris, a 33-year-old transgender woman killed in Augusta, Georgia. On September 30th, we lost Michelle, Michelle and Ramos Vargas, a transgender woman from Puerto Rico. On September 28th, we lost Mia Green, a 29-year-old Black transgender woman killed in Philadelphia. On September 19th, we lost Arian Burnett, a Black transgender woman killed in Independence, Missouri. On August 31st, we lost, lost Dijon Durand Kizzy, shot by Los Angeles County Police in California. On August 13th, we lost Dior H. Ova, a black transgender woman in, in New York. On August 12th, we lost Keith Sam, a black transgender woman killed in Lafayette, Louisiana. On July 28th, we lost Asia Raquel Roan Spears, a black transgender woman killed in Portland, Oregon. On July 27th, we lost Koyesha D. Hardy, a 22-year-old Black transgender woman killed in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. On July 13th, we lost Marilyn Casares, 22, a transgender Latina killed in Brawley, California. On July 4th, we lost Summer Taylor, a white non-binary individual killed in Seattle, Washington. On July 3rd, we lost Bree Black, a 27-year-old Black transgender woman killed in Pompano Beach, Florida. On July 1st, we lost 32-year-old Black transgender woman, Shaki Peters, who was killed in Am Amite City, Louisiana. On June 30th, we lost Mercy Mack, a 22-year-old Black transgender woman killed in Dallas, Texas. On June 25th, we lost Brayla Stone, a 17-year-old Black transgender girl found killed in Little Rock, Arkansas. On June 13th, we lost Brian Egypt Powers, a 43-year-old Black transgender person killed in Akron, Ohio. On June 12th, we lost Richard Brooks, shot by Atlanta police officers in Georgia. On June 9th, we lost Rhea Milton, a 25-year-old Black transgender woman killed in Liberty Township, Ohio. This is really hard, so. Writing these was even harder, I thought, but. On June 9th, we lost Dominique Remy Fells, a black transgender woman killed in Philadelphia. On June 6th, we lost Carlos Carson, um, killed by uh, Knights in Tulsa armed security guards in Tulsa, Oklahoma. On June 1st, we lost David McAtee to Louisville Metropolitan Police Officers in Kentucky. On May 31st, we lost Selena Reyes Hernandez a 37-year-old transgender woman who was killed in Chicago. On May 27th, we lost Tony, <laughs> Tony the Tiger McDade, <laughs> a, 20, uh, a black transgender man um, killed by Tallah Tallahassee police officers in Florida. On May 25th, we lost George Perry Floyd, killed by Minneapolis police officer in Minneapolis, Minnesota. On May 9th, we lost Jane Thompson, a 33-year-old white transgender woman killed in Mesa County, Colorado. On May 6th, we lost Drayson Sean Reed, killed by unidentified Indianapolis Metropolitan Police in Indiana. On May 3rd, we lost Nina Pop, a black transgender woman killed in Sigstown, Missouri. On May 6th, we lost Hell J. O'Regan, 20, a transgender woman killed in San Antonio, Texas. Oh, no, that was the same, sorry. On 
April 24th, we lost Michael Brent Charles Ramos, um, shot by Austin police detectives in Texas. On April 21st, we lost Layla Palaz Sanchez, um, 21, uh, killed in Puerto Rico. On April 21st, we lost Serena Angelique Velasquez Ramos, 32, also killed in Puerto Rico alongside um, Layla. April 13th, we lost a transgender woman in Puerto Rico named Penelope Diaz Ramirez. On April 11th, we lost Joanna Metzger, a transgender woman killed in Baltimore, Maryland. On March 30th, we lost Daniel T. Prude, killed by Rochester police officers in New York. On March 28th, we lost a transgender woman named Lexi, age 33, killed in Harlem, New York. On March 18th, we lost Monica Diamond, 34, a black transgender woman killed in Charlotte, North Carolina. On March 13th, we lost Brianna Taylor, killed by Louisville Metro police officers in Kentucky. On March 5th, we lost Yampi Mendez Oroco, 19, killed in Puerto Rico, a transgender man. On March 3rd, we lost Manuel Manny Elijah Ellis, killed by Tacoma police officers in Washington. On February 24th, we lost Luisa Luciano Ruiz, um, fatally shot in Toa Boja, Puerto Rico. On January 27th, we lost William Howard Green, killed by Prince George County police officers in Maryland. On New Year's Day, we lost um, Dustin Parker, 25, who was fatally shot in McAllister, Oklahoma, um, who was a transgender individual. And so while the details of these cases differ and there are innumerable stories that remain untold, it's clear that fatal violence disproportionately affects men of color and transgender women of color, particularly black men and black transgender women. And that the intersections of racism, sexism, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, unchecked access to guns and systemic violence perpetrated by police brutality in the prison industrial complex prevails. We each have the action in our words, in how we support one another, in our politics, in our careers, both large and small opportunities to be action oriented, to be better, to do better for those who remain voiceless. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I don't really cry in public, so this sucks. <laughs> um, There's an opportunity ahead of us. A super new moon occurs today, November 15th at 12.07 AM, just two days before the Leonid meteor shower reaches its peak. New moons occur when the moon is between the sun and earth. About every 29.5 days, the two bodies are lined up in the sky along the same line of a celestial longitude. The celestial longitude is a projection of the Earth's longitudinal lines on the celestial sphere when two bodies share the same longitude that is called a conjunction. If one draws a line from Polaris, the North Star due south toward the sun, the line also hits the moon. A super new moon sets path of a new beginning. So did today is an opportunity to contemplate and start anew. So during this new moon that we share together today, I want you to sit and reflect on the KUF values that we share together with this fellowship. I want you to set worthwhile intentions, light a candle in remembrance for those we've lost. Challenge yourself to engage with a new idea, make a list of your intentions. Consider how you embody the inherent worth and dignity of every person, how you value and embody justice, equity and compassion in human relations, acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth in your congregation, how you provide and nurture a free and responsible search for truth and meaning, 
of conscience and the use of democratic process within our congregations and in society at large, how you aim to create a world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. And how do you exhibit respect for the interdependent web of existence for all of which we are part of? Spiritual social justice is our integrity. It is our faith, our ethic, the keystone in the arch of our character. It's how we rise to the occasion to be fearless, to challenge our truths and to seek change. Change isn't just happening, but we make it happen. We are making it happen. We don't have all the answers and often more questions than anything. Thus, we have work to do. I wish we didn't, but we do. This work, these changes are always clear. We don't always know what we have to do to usher in the changes necessary to serve all, to create our new normal, to truly create an equitable world where a community is not murdered for identities they hold and biases our world hold on to. The way isn't always clear and most certainly not easy, but together we can accomplish more than a part. So I encourage you to harness the intentions you hold inside and the intentions of this fellowship, because how do we get there? First, we have to believe that this world is real and possible. If you struggle to believe in that world, look around at the people in this service. Look around at this amazing community and hold on to this image because that world we wish for looks and feels something like this. Hold on to it and take it with everything you do. Each of us has power to educate ourselves, to talk to the individuals around us, to listen and then listen more, to be more generous than we believe we're capable, to make changes intentional in our community, um, to engage in workshops and we'll be hosting a series through KK, KUUF, so stay tuned. Um, to grow our knowledge and unpack our biases. And we all have the power to change ourselves and our world. So I charge you with that opportunity. Take the reset of this new moon and the shifting tides of our new normal as nothing but inspiration to make our world better for everyone. Be wakeful, be mindful, and be ready for your call to action. And you will be called in the midst of violence, hatred, oppression, and injustice to advocate and use your power for change to stand on the side of love and nonviolence and social justice. So thank you. I, I hope I did the sermon right. <laughs> you know, we, we really appreciate it, Amy. We know that was that was very hard. Um, but thank you for for memorializing all those we've lost and for the uh, very important call to action. Truly, thank you. I'm like deeply humbled and also really, really, this is not me. So thank you for sharing this space with me and giving me this space. <laughs>